Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. I noticed that my Konica videos have gotten a lot of views and interest since I posted the first one last summer. So I decided to make a video about my uh, oldest Konica camera, uh, this one here, and talk a little bit about the early history of the Konica camera company. A lot of people don't realize that Konica wasn't always a maker of cameras. Uh, originally it was a pharmacy uh, here in Tokyo. And uh, in the 19th century, mid-19th century, it was known as the uh, Konishiya Rokube, which was Tokyo's largest pharmacy at the time. Uh, the pharmacist in this pharmacy, Mr. Rokusaburo Sugiura, uh, began selling uh, photographic equipment around 1873 or so, making uh, Konaka an older photographic company even than Kodak. In, I think, 1878 or 1880, uh, Mr. Uh, Rokusaburo uh, moved uh, uh, to a new store in the Nihonbashi district of Tokyo. And this was known as the uh, Konishi Honten, or Konishi Head Store. In those days, uh, Nihonbashi was the most fashionable shopping district in Japan. Nihonbashi means Bridge of Japan. And uh, this bridge, which is located near uh, Edo Castle or the Imperial Palace, was uh, the center of Japan or the center of Edo era Japan. And all distances around the country are measured from this point. It was also the old uh, headquarters of the or old fish market of Japan before it was moved to uh, Tsukiji, and now it's been moved to uh, another place. But uh, Nihonbashi is interesting because it was the first place in Japan to get a telephone. It was the first place to have electric lights. And it was the first place where stores had glass display cases. And it was a really uh, good move on uh, Mr. Rokusaburo's uh, part to move the new store to Nihonbashi. Uh, this guaranteed that he would get a lot of traffic and good sales. Uh, sales of photographic equipment were uh, quite strong uh, at his new store. But pretty much everything that he sold was uh, imported. Uh, in those days, Japan wasn't making cameras or camera equipment yet. So uh, before the 20th century, uh, uh, Mr. Rokusaburo uh, began plans to uh, manufacture cameras in Japan and sell them at his store in Nihonbashi. And uh, by the turn of the century, or the early uh, 20th century, uh, Konica was Japan's largest camera company. A lot of people aren't aware of that. They, when you think of cameras in Japan, you think of Nikon and Canon and such like that. But uh, Konica was was a big name in its day. And Konica remained uh, a large manufacturer of cameras and photographic equipment until the Second War, when pretty much everything in Tokyo was destroyed. Uh, following the war, the company regrouped, and uh, it took uh, a few years to get back on its feet. But uh, when they did, they introduced the Konica One 35mm rangefinder camera in 1948. Uh, this is a Konica One which dates from around 1950. The early versions uh, say made in occupied Japan across the bottom in the leatherette. And this one simply says made in Japan. Uh, this one dates to around 1950 or so. Uh, these were styled a little bit after uh, early Leica cameras uh, without the focal plane shutter. They have uh, uh, a leaf shutter uh, uh, built behind the lens, uh, similar to the later rangefinder cameras. Uh, quite a compact, uh, small, and easy, manage, easy design to manage. You can carry it in a coat pocket if you like. Uh, like the early Leica rangefinder cameras, they have a collapsible lens. To operate the camera, you have to pull the lens outward and turn it until it locks into place. And then you have the focusing tab here, which allows you to focus the lens in and out. Uh, the controls and functions and stuff are quite simple. You have the film rewind knob on top. Uh, this pulls out to make it easy to uh, insert film cartridges. You have the viewfinder window and you have the film winding release button. And over here you have the film winding dial. Uh, when you are winding the film, you have to first depress the release button until it clicks. Uh, then you can wind. Uh, to the next frame and it will stop automatically and to rewind or to wind to the next frame you push this button to unlock it and it's ready to go again. Uh, the important controls like later uh, Konica rangefinder cameras are located on the lens body. Uh, we the, bo the base is knurled here to allow you to turn it to lock into place. Uh, we have the uh, shutter release lever located here on the side and we have a shutter charging lever on the top. 
to charge the shutter, you pull it uh, to the left uh, if you're standing behind the camera, and then you push down on the tab here uh, to fire the shutter. The aperture uh, lever is located here on the bottom of the camera, and as you turn it, you can see the, the scale located here on the, the side of the lens. Uh, to operate the camera, first you uh, wind the next frame, you charge the shutter, you focus and compose, uh, set your aperture, set your shutter speed with the ring on the front, and then fire, and that's all there is to it. Uh, despite its age, the Konica one has uh, so, some interesting features which make it uh, a, a top-of-the-line rangefinder camera at the time. First was a full selection of uh, slower shutter speeds. Uh, you have one second, half a second, quarter second, and then a maximum shutter speed of one five hundredth of a second. So not too many uh, rangefinder cameras came with uh, this wide range of uh, shutter speeds at the time. Uh, uh, interesting thing about the Konica one, there's no uh, shoe for a flash. If you want to run a flash on the Konica one, you need to run an accessory flash bracket and attach your flash to the PC uh, sync uh, socket here on the side of the lens. Uh, these are really well-made cameras, very sturdy. Uh, I, I, I remember when the like uh, FED and Zorky cameras were so popular a few years ago on eBay and they were selling for pretty good money, uh, selling for more than what these Konica's were, but like the FEDs and uh, Zorkies and such aren't even one-tenth the quality that you find in a camera like the Konica, uh, Konica One. These have a superb lens. Uh, the Hexanon lens, whether you choose the 3.5 or 2.8 version, they are superb performers. Uh, they're, uh, I, I think they're better than the Leica Elmar lenses uh, produced around the same time. Uh, the fit and finish is first rate on these cameras. Uh, Konica uh, cut no corners, and you know th these were the cameras which uh, put uh, Konica back on its feet in the 20th century. And uh, the success of these cameras led to uh, improvements and better cameras over time, until Konica was once again, if not the number, they weren't the number one manufacturer of uh, cameras in Japan, but they were. Uh, a producer of really high quality cameras and they produce some really amazing things. Uh, the Konica Hexar uh, is a, an example, the Hexar uh, rangefinder camera and uh, along with some really wonderful lenses. Uh, if you are interested in buying an old Konica camera I sell these on my Etsy and eBay stores. Uh, this one I think is listed right now. Uh, you can find links to my stores in the description below the video. I hope you uh, were interest, You found the video interesting. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the comments section below. If you want to see any more videos about cameras or film photography, uh, please subscribe, and I'll be uh, posting more videos soon. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and hope you tune in again soon.